Thanks a lot, Victor. Uh, uh, hello, my dear colleagues and friends. I'm happy to be here uh, to see your bright faces. And uh, let me introduce uh, this research, uh, as it was mentioned, uh, polarization microscopy, uh, biomedical imaging, and diagnostics. My name is, uh, oops, okay. My name is Yuri Yushenko. I represent uh, Chernivtsi National University from Ukraine. So uh, today we'll have a lecture now. And on February 23, uh, we will have a laboratory experimental demonstration here, just here, so everyone can, uh, uh, can, 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 can see and can measure everyone I, 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 I will talk about. So uh, the list of lectures, it's a, it will be one lecture, but four uh, directions, including the introduction, is the following. The lecture first is a basic concept of polarization, Stokes vector, Mueller matrices itself, and basics of laser polarimetry. In the second lecture, we will uh, discuss some basics of uh, model description of structure and optical anisotropy of biological tissues. On the third lectures, we will uh, talk about the methods and resources of analysis of obtained results during the processing of biological tissue polarization in homogeneous images. And uh, on the uh, fourth lecture, we will see, uh, we will discuss the principles and methods of polarization and Mueller matrix mapping. So a few pictures of our uh, Chernivtsi National University main building. Uh, someone saw it before. <laughs> someone, I hope, will see it in the near future. So it's our main building. Rector and vice rector are here now, I hope. Uh, this is another view of the university. It's a central entrance. Everyone can see. Central, uh, 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 this is a church. Called this university was uh, founded on uh, 1864, uh, uh, I think, by the uh, law, by the talk of Emperor of Austro-Hungarian, Franz Josef. Here, some view of our town. It's a main street. You can see this uh, Austrian, Hungarian type, uh, just a little bit German type bu buildings. Here our theater and the view uh, from the top of Chernivtsi town. Uh, so <clears throat> let's start with an introduction and uh, uh, we are trying to formulate some uh, basic concepts of what we will talking about. So the first concept is that the, why will we are dealing with the optical methods at all. So optical methods of diagnosis of biological object, objects itself and the visualization of the structure occupy now you know, a leading positions thanks to the high information content and capacity also and multifunctional capabilities. So you are, <coughs> you will know about the photometric methods, spectral methods, polarization itself methods, correlation methods, etc. What should be stated is that a new scientific direction within optics at all uh, is now formed. It's called optics of biological tissues and fluids. Uh, and this direction is a rapidly developing uh, thing. The main areas of basic research are the results of uh, theoretical and experimental studies of photon transport from the very beginning in biological tissues and fluids. After that, separate direction in optics of biological tissues and fluids formed by polarimetric investigations. Uh, it, it should be stated that analysis of polarization characteristics of the scattered radiation allow us to obtain additional quantitatively new results on morphological and physiological state of biological tissues. A new step, you maybe know about it, lies in the development of methods of optical diagnostics of biological tissues. Uh, it it, it uh, deals with the fluorescent techniques 
and the analysis of polarization state of this fluorescence technique. So so-called uh, laser fluorescence polarimetry or laser after fluorescence polarimetry. Uh, let's start with the, with the light. You know uh, that the light, it's a electric, electromagnetic wave. The electric vector oscillates in, here you can see in the X plane, magnetic vector oscillates in Y plane. And the number of, uh, the uh, way of propagation is along to Z axis. Uh, in optics, we deal uh, mostly with electric field itself, because magnetic field is uh, some other uh, very wide uh, research of area, or area of research. So let's consider the electric vector here, this one. So here you can see it yellow. It can be decomposed on a two uh, orthogonal projection, Ye sub x and Ye sub y. Uh, the, this is, these are two plane waves. You can see the equations of uh, th th these fields here. It's a x component of our electric vector oscillation and y component of our electricity vector oscillations. It differs by these amplitudes, and here the initial phase are also presented. So, you know, the omega is an angular frequency, k it's a wave number, so, and this is a very important thing, that a phase, initial phase. Uh, the initial phase, yes, it's a time from the beginning of oscillation. As you can see in this figure, what is the initial phase? Zero, zero, yes, exactly, zero. But a little bit later, we will discuss it very precisely. So what kind of parameters uh, do we, uh, or can we use uh, in order to make some diagnosis or make some uh, quantification of, for example, scattered light? Uh, due to the, oops, due to the, uh, this representation, amplitude, can be used for some, some evaluation. Yes, maybe. Frequency also. Phase, including the initial phase. And the fourth parameters I'd like to present, it's a polarization. Who knows about polarization? What does it mean? Yeah? Exactly. It's a trajectory of the tip of this vector when we see like here. Cool. Uh, so about the polarization and the importance of these parameters and the possible realization of diagnostical methods. So it's a, it is, as it, as it will be said, as it is, what was said, it's an important property of electromagnetic waves. For example, in communication, Completely polarized waves are used. In radio astronomy, unpolarized component exists. And the technique to analyze the polarization, known as polarimetry, when we deal with the laser radiation, it's called laser polarimetry. The co complete polarization types of electromagnetic waves are the following. It's uh, three types, linear polarization, circular polarization, and the most common type is an elliptical polarization. Due to the radio astronomical sources, they may possess random polarization, also known as unpolarized waves, and the partial polarization. It's a sum or a mixture of completely polarized and completely unpolarized radiation. So it's a very complex situation, so we, we are not talking about it. So we, we will, on this lecture, we will deal with uh, classical complete polarization types. Uh, let's start with the graphical representation and the so-called polarization ellipse. 
So as we just talking, uh, so the polarization is a trajectory of the tip of electricity vector here when we are looking in this direction. So when we analyze these two orthogonal components of the electricity vector and do some algebra, it can be done by itself. So we can obtain this, this equation itself. Squares, yeah, sine, cosine, and so on. It is, this is well-known equation of the ellipse. Uh, let's start with the parameters which this ellipse can be characterized. First one is the size of a minor axis. Minor axis, semi-minor axis. The size of major axis here and semi-major axis also uh, often used. Uh, the third very important parameter is the orientation, so-called tilt angle or azimuth of elliptical polarization the, between this direction x and the semi-major axis. The fourth important parameter is the axial ratio so-called ellipticity of polarization. It is the angle between, let me see, yeah, between the length of the minor to the length of the major axis here. It can be uh, plus or minus, yeah? This is ellipticity angle, very important parameter. Also, it can be used as a diagnostical parameter, it's a sense, clockwise or anticlockwise. So, you know, this electricity vector, why we, we, we obtain ellipse, it's sensing clockwise or anticlockwise, while wave is distributed forward. On this slide, you can see the most uh, easy and the most conventional type of polarization uh, of, uh, oftenly used in different investigation. It's a linear polarization. It should be stated uh, that any form of complete polarization resulting from a coherent source can be analyzed using the polarization ellipse. For example, for this one, yeah, these two projections. So if there is no amplitude in Y, this one is equal to zero. So there is only one component exists, it's X vertical, yeah? If we can return one slide, so when you uh, here place Y, yeah, or X is zero, so we will obtain simple like this oscillation in this direction, in x direction, yeah, and in x plane, here's the propagation direction. It's like the projection of this oscillation on this plane will be linear. Or if there is no amplitude in x component, there is only one component exists, it's y or Y component, yeah? This one. So, for this oscillation, it, it the, always said it's a, a linear polarization with azimuth is equal to zero here, with azimuth is equal to uh, 90 degrees. For example, for the plus minus 45 degrees azimuth, the phase difference between of these two oscillations of these two uh, uh, orthogonal projection of our electricity vector should be zero or pi for plus and for minus. And the ratio between these uh, amplitudes, they must be equal. So they are equal and the resulting oscillation we can obtain here is plus 
45 degrees azimuth or minus 45 degrees azimuth. So let's start with a, another case. So it should be noted that linear and uh, this one circular polarization, it's a boundary states of the most common elliptical polarization. So if we have our well-known two projections, yeah? And if the phase difference initial, yeah, this delta is plus minus 90 degrees, and we have this ratio of equality between of these two components, then this ratio is equal to cosine, and this ratio is equal to sine, and we get the equation of a circle itself, yeah, with a clockwise or anti-counterclockwise, yeah, rotation. And this wave, it's said to be circularly polarized. Yeah, you can see it here. This is a procedure of adding of these two orthogonal components. And if we will look here in this direction, we will see circle. Here, you can see the procedure of adding of these two components. So we call the phase difference is plus minus 90 degree, but the phase shift is equal to quarter wave between of these two oscillations. And when you will do s summarization of this vector and this vector, and after that this and this, the tip of your uh, summarized vector will be rotating. Here, this is. Uh, okay, <clears throat> let's continue with the elliptical polarization. So, in the most common case, in the most common case, the magnitudes of E, X, and E, Y are not equal. And there is, exists a, an, a phase difference between the two. In this case, the tip of the electric, electricity vector uh, describes an ellipse, and the wave is said to be elliptically polarized. Here, you can see these two oscillations these two projections, yeah? The amplitude is not equal between each other, and there is a, some phase shift, not zero and not uh, 90 degree. Okay, and in this case, in this direction, we will see ellipse. Due to the ratio between of these magnitudes and the value of this shift, phase shift, the rotation could be clockwise or anti-clockwise. Here you can see it. So linear and circular polarization, when we can add it, gives us elliptical polarization. And you should know that any wave may be written, any wave may be written as a superposition of the two polarization. Let's see some interesting program. You can download it freely through the internet. It's called emanim. So, so, if you have a linear polarization, yeah, this one. If we have another linear polarization, this two wave, what should we obtain when we add one to another? Who can? Yes. Exactly. We will obtain also linear wave, but in this direction, this blue one. Okay, another interesting question. What should we do if these two waves or a projection of one wave, yeah, will be left and right circular? The same, we, we obtain exactly, because the amplitudes is R equal, the phase difference are the same, zero. So let's, let's try to, okay, show axis only, yeah? This blue one and these two vectors are rotating. Okay, let's, let's continue with the, uh, as, we 
said a few minutes ago, that elliptical polarization is the sum of linear and the circular one, yeah? Let's check. Let's check. Yeah, this one, yes? Yes, we can see it. And uh, what we will obtain, uh, for example, we, we talked about uh, when the uh, amplitudes of two oscillation are not equal, yeah? And there is some phase difference between of them. So we, sh we should obtain, we, we, we have to obtain the elliptical polarization, yeah? So let's, let's try the amplitude of this one. We make smaller and a little bit phase difference for the second wave, yeah? This one, the phase difference is very sensitive for a difference. Okay. This, all I said, was uh, about the sensitivity of the ratio between of amplitudes and the phase difference between of two os oscillations. So in, in, in another wave, polarization is very sensitive to any disturbances in these ratios. So the first conclusion, so it, 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 this tool is very sensitive to the any changes in, for example, in biological objects. But we should know how to use these changes in polarization in order to, to make some diagnosis or, or something like that. So let's start with the Stokes parameters. This model uh, experiment you saw it's only calculation. But how one can measure directly from the intensity measurements this polarization and said that this one is linear, this one is circular, this one is even partly polarized, and this one is elliptical. So in early 18th year, 52, Sir George Gabriel Stokes took a very different approach and discovered that polarization can be described in terms of observables using an experimental identification or definition. So, why? Because the polarization ellipse itself is only valid for a given instant of time. So, this ellipse is a function of time. With time, this ellipse will change. To get uh, the Stokes parameters, firstly, uh, one to a time average, integral over time, and a little bit of algebra also. And one can obtain this equation. So here, you see the time, yeah, in this, yeah, x with e, y. Here, we deal now only with amplitudes, without time. And these two parameters, this one, this, this, and this one also, they, he, he called own parameters, his own stocks parameters. The first one, it's a sum of amplitudes of these two orthogonal oscillations. The second one is the difference between of them. The third one and the fourth one, it's a, this kind of combinations with the phase, with the initial phase. 
also. Okay, let's return to the polarization ellipse itself. So, and how Stokes parameters can be described in geometrical terms? Here we are. This is normalized Stokes parameters, a little bit later about this. The first element is unity, oh, in any cases, because it's a whole intensity. We can divide all the elements on this intensity and obtain this one will be zero, uh, will be unity. The second one is a combination of cosines, where here we are with azimuth, and this one is, what is this? Ellipticity, or, 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 or no, no, vice versa. This one, azimuth, this one ellipticity. Thanks a lot. Okay, the third one, and the fourth one. Because when we deal with, for example, elliptical polarization, and we can measure the fourth Stokes vector parameters, we immediately, just after that, we, we will obtain the uh, value of ellipticity of our polarization or our wave. Uh, the Stokes parameters after that can be arranged in the Stokes vector. It's not the real vector, but it's something like a, in, in, from the matrix uh, calculation. So we have a matrix in different dimension and we have a vector. It's a matrix with one dimension is unity, yeah? So this one is Stokes vector. This first element is a total intensity of light. The second one, how we can measure the second one? We should just measure, just adjust our analyzer, polarizer, yeah, polarizer analyzer on the output of our system with angle zero and measure this intensity from a CCD camera, from a photodiode, from all, all you want. Measure respectively, just turn out this, uh, turn, turn this uh, polarizer analyzer at angle 90 degree and measure this intensity and calculate using MATLAB because as, uh, as I saw, so very many people, very many scientists are, are in charge in MATLAB, um, very closely charged. The second one, this one, is a difference between these two components, intensity. So this one is a measurable quantities, just intensity. What about the force parameters? It, here it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit, uh, I can say, harder, because here we should uh, make uh, this intensity of right circular component and left circular component. So in this measurement, we should add the so-called uh, optical compensator, namely a quarter wave plate before the analyzer and adjust analyzer on these angles here and here. And also just divide between of them. Uh, Stokes, vector, uh, Stokes vector elements for a linearly polarization or a linearly polarized wave is the following, because we have only uh, this one is unity, this one and this one is not equal to zero, and the fourth one is absolutely zero. Differences between of Lin linearly polarized with azimuths of zero and 90 degree is only this one, one will be unity, this one will be minus unity, and, 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 and so on. For a circular polarization situation, when we have a fully polarized and circularly polarized wave, the second and the third elements are absolutely zero, and the fourth one is non-zero. For a fully polarized light, this equation is in charge. Here, yeah, it's divide. For example, if we deal 
this uh, partly polarized light. So here will be uh, less. Not equal, but less. OK. Now, we're just talking about uh, Stokes vector. So we deals with a, uh, uh, we deals with a field, optical field. We can measure polarization state of this field, and so on and so on. We can obtain even a, a topological distribution of different polarization when we use the CCD camera and uh, as a detector. But what about object? What object did this perturbation in uh, polarization states? So, together with stocks, uh, if light is represented by stocks vectors, yes? Optical components are then should be described with a Muller matrices in such a way. This is a description, a polarization description of output light. This one is Stokes vector of input light. In order to do this mathematical operation, this one converted to this one. We have to use this four to four matrix called Muller matrix. When all these elements connected with an optical property of our object itself. So for example, for very simple case, this one, input light, output light. And here we have some rhombus, some lens, and some triangles from, a, for example, from a different types of glasses. This one, element one, two, and three. So the transformation of, of light can be described with this simple equation. But the, this Muller matrices should be written in reverse way. Yeah, you know. This is a main formula connected, this one also, connected with the transformation of polarization and even non-polarized light. We can use this as, as uh, it was said by uh, Professor Calve, we have to use some formalism. We have to invent some formalism in order to predict what is the optical properties of object with measured uh, this Stokes vector. We measure Stokes vector of the output after the object. We know Stokes vector as an input signal. For example, it's linearly polarized with azimuth zero degree. And after that, we can calculate Muller matrix. When different elements, different, it will be said a little bit later, connected with some properties of object. It uh, can be biofringence, dichroism, and so on, absorbs, uh, um, absorption. Uh, so, briefly on the basis of laser polarimetry. So every polarization microscope allows us to invent, for example, uh, crystalline objects, yes? But not everyone can give us a possibility to measure all the Stokes vector elements in order to calculate Muller matrix. So we deal with Muller polarimeter. So it's a, it can be it can be uh, constructed on the, on the base of conventional polarization microscope, but it can be separately collected with uh, necessary optical elements. You will see it next Thursday here. In order to measure, so, uh, okay, briefly described, it's a laser source. It may be not a laser source, but wide band source, and after that you should use, for example, some in, in, uh, narrow band interferometric filter in order to get some uh, wavelengths you want. But laser is more simple. This is a collimator in order to create a collimated uh, beam with uh, 
needed collimation ratio. This one is the first quarter wave plate. The task of this plate is only to create a circularly polarized wave. Because the laser here, for example, it can be diode laser, yes? It, uh, it, it linearly polarized. Uh, and when we, after that, by means of this polarizer, want uh, or do some changes in illumination of in, in polarization of illumination beam, the intensity will decrease, yes, and some position. So in order to overcome this problem, we use this quarter wave plate. For example, if you had a laser with a circular polarization on the output, so okay, no problem. But this is more flexible system. This one, quarter wave plate, put it here, provides a condition of circular, circular polarization for the object in order to calculate the force Stokes vector parameters. Object can be a slice of histological section, it can be dried a biological fluid, it can be, it can be some, something, but this one is for a transmission mode, yes? If you want to deal with a reflection mode, you only put this part of this uh, setup at needed angle, and you measure all the same. The procedure is the same. Against quarter wave plate, analyzer, CCD camera, and the processing unit can be. So, in order to obtain in this system distribution of azimuth and ellipticity of polarization, for it's a so-called polarization maps using CCD camera, yeah? You should only measure minimal and maximal intensity here by means of rotating analyzer nine. It can be, it can be, it can be done with, a, for example, step engines and so on. This two arrays, minimal and maximum. And after that, calculate these angles for corresponding angles of this analyzer for this minimal uh, array, and after that, simply calculate the polarization azimuth by subtract, subtracting pi uh, divided by two, and the ellipticity, like arctangents of this ratio, minimal intensity to maximal intensity, that's all. So it can be done automatically. And uh, some automatic polarimeters exist, but uh, not with a CCD camera, but for a single beam, yeah, with a only no, photodiode. So let's talk about uh, basics of model description of structure and optical anisotropy of bi biological tissues. What, what does it mean, optical anisotropy? Because every biological object, almost every, except of fat tissue, is anisotropic object. So optical anisotropy is a difference in the optical properties of a medium as a function of the direction of propagation of optical radiation in the medium and of the state of polarization of the radiation. So one can separate amplitude anisotropy, so-called dichroism, and phase anisotropy called biofringence. What about amplitude anisotropy? So crystals, and, and the biological tissue is a polycrystalline structure, may similarly show absorption which depends upon polarization. So for different polarization states of illuminating beams, the absorption will be different. One can see the linear dichroism and the circular dichroism. Linear dichroism, it's a dependence of absorption for a linear polarization. Circular dichroism, it's a depending on absorption of circular polarization. What about biofringence? Asymmetry in crystal structures causes two different refractive indices. And opposite polarization follow different paths through the crystal. 
I can show the linear biofringence and the circular biofringence, or so-called optical activity. So let's start with some animations. How many times? Okay. Just look at the phenomenon. Okay, we start with uh, linear biofringence and uh, linear dichroism, yeah? What about linear dichroism? It's a, you can see that a red oscillation, absor absorption of light or red oscillation is much more than, for example, for the green one. It depends on the azimuth of polarization. What can we obtain this yellow one cube? It's an object, our medium. What we will obtain on the, what we can measure on the output of this uh, object, because this two is only projection of uh, the whole polarization, yeah? So we will we'll, we'll obtain something like this strange curve, you know. What about circular dichroism? Okay, so you see also that the green oscillation is not absorbed, absorbing, but the red one is. And the output total polarization, yeah, oscillation on the output of this object will be as follows. So we are talking about, it's not really two waves in a crystal, this one. We have a, some, because any state of polarization, any state of polarization can be represented by combination of two, or a linear one or circular one. So in the crystal, it can be ordinary, extraordinary, and th this dependence in absorption is, a, is, is, is evidence. Okay, what about, let's start with linear biofringence is my, so we have these two uh, oscillations, yeah, on the input and uh, one of them, for, for one of these oscillations, the refraction index is a bit higher. You can see 1.05 and 1.00, so if, I choose the similar refraction indices. The situation we 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 were, we were, we were talking about we were talking about uh, on the previous lecture. So and only just a change, a little change in ref refraction index will lead to creation of elliptical polarization on the output of this object. So we can. Uh, we, we, we can, we, we should something do with this in our experiments. We, we should know what we are measure and what is the process in object uh, bring, brings uh, these uh, changes, yes? Okay, so briefly. Here you, could, you can see a soft tissue structure. It's a transmission electron microscope of human skin. Dermis, yeah, and this is the model, because every tissue, most of them, muscular uh, and, and uh, derma and so on, connected with the, the, the very first element in this, it's uh, glycine and uh, predominantly amino acids. It forms the tropocollagen. The tropocollagen forms the microfibrils and fibrils. Fibrils forms the collagen fibers, and the collagen fibers form fiber bundle. So, biological tissue reveals self-similar fractal structure as a result of growth processes here. And the very, very what, near, very fresh publications about multifractal uh, light uh, scattering in tissues prove this theory in Optics Express and Optics Letters. 
Here you can see also, this one, it's uh, fibers, collagen fibers, and this one also, but in this direction, yeah? Okay, let's start with the algorithm of Mueller matrix modeling of biological layer anisotropy. As we can discuss a little bit later, so there are following uh, mechanisms, phase anisotropy and amplitude anisotropy, divided to optical activity or circular biofringence and linear biofringence. Circular dichroism and linear dichroism. What parameters can we measure? We can measure in, for this process, polarization plane rotation angle, sigma, and the corresponding partial mirror matrix for this sigma. We can measure phase difference, phase shift between the orthogonal component of amplitude, delta, and this partial matrix operator. Index of circular and uh, linear decreases and the corresponding partial Mueller matrices. This one is Mueller matrix M of generalized optical anisotropy of our biological optics. This one we measure in our experiments, but we should know the influence of this partial Mueller matrices corresponding to the different optical activities in this object in order to, for example, to diagnose a cancer changes on a very, very, very early stages and so on, because cancer changes on early stage uh, connected with this polar, with optical activity of molecules. So, and we can decompose this Mueller matrix. We, we should know, we, we have to know the processes of decomposing of this Mueller matrix in order to, to, to define these algorithms separately. Okay, yeah just a bit of matrix algebra for circular linear biofringence, for circular and linear decreases. Here you can see these parameters. Here, rho, this one rho, it's a orientation of fibril in the tissue in every point. Delta, it's a phase shift that this fibril brings between of orthogonal component of polarization. Here, the values of absorption. So, the generalized Miller matrix is as follows. This is normalized Miller matrix, yes, that this element is, is zero, is, 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 is unity. What about the experiment? Experiment proof this situation. For the skeletal muscle tissue, or skeletal muscle, you can see this whole Miller matrix, this Miller matrix images. And no, no one of these Miller matrix images is not uh, zero, because it tells us about the presence of whole four uh, processes in so in biofringences and uh, decreases in one tissue at one time. But what is the information content of Mueller matrix element of all this one? How we can decode? We can measure this, but how we can decode all of these images in order to obtain some necessary information? So due to the modeling and so on, this one of elements, it's a first line, yeah? This line is connected with mechanisms of optical anisotropic absorption. The second and the third line of this yeah, Mueller matrix is connected with the phase modulation of, radio, of laser radiation on the background of optical anisotropic absorption. So the mechanisms are presented simultaneously in these elements. The last line, it's a complex information about superposition of mechanisms of linear biofringence and decreases. But in uh, several papers of, about the decomposition of Mueller matrices and so on, of, of Lou Chipman and, and the other scientists, one can, one can divide some Mueller matrix invariants. This one and this one are connected only with a, with a very high precision, connected only with the mechanisms of anisotropic absorption. 
this one M44 connected directly with the phase of with the linear biofringence. And this one delta M is a combination of elements. This one difference and this sum of sum of diagonal elements difference between of yeah. It connected with the tangents of two sigma so circular biofringence. So, so how much time? 30 minutes, yeah? Okay. So this is quite microscopic images in polarization microscope of different type of tissue, you can see it. For example, tissue with ordered and disordered structure. Here, you can see this order, yeah? It's a myocardium tissue in coaxial and crossed polarizer analyzer. So you can see that in crossed polarizer analyzer, here we can see optical activity. Light changed, polarizationally changed and comes through the analyzer. The same for a brain tissue in coaxial and crossed polarizer analyzer. This one, it's a, a photograph or yeah, CCD image of benign tumor adenoma of prostate gland tissue in coaxial and crossed polarizer analyzer. This one is a tissue with benign and malignant formation. So precancer, malignant formation of cancer of cervix uterine. Adenom, adenocarcinoma. This one is my favorite. This one is a blood, blood, uh, blood plasma, crystallite blood plasma in coaxial and cross polarizer analyzer. It's a so called biological fluid. And this one is a synovial fluid of a joint with rheumatoid arthritis in coaxial yeah, and cross polarizer analyzer. So we deal not only with some. Uh, soft images, we deal with pretty nice images. So uh, let's start about what can we do after the obtaining of these Mueller matrix elements? What is the procedure of processing of these images? Because image is not a, uh, is not a diagnosis. And if it is possible to make some objective evaluation, not subjective. Because you know about the final diagnosis, it's a histochemical methods, when some very uh, clever man or woman looking in the microscope and said, this is cancer, this is not cancer, and this one, I don't know exactly, but maybe you can see. And you see? Yes, yes, it's, it's maybe cancer. Okay, the third one, the fourth one and so on. So we try to elaborate some objective mechanisms of evaluation. So we deal with statistic analysis. It's a four statistical moments, so-called mean value or average, standard deviation or dispersion, coefficient of skewness and coefficient of courtesies. For example, if we have some, what does it mean, mean value, you know, yes? It's a formula. Standard deviation, it's a disturbance between mean value. What is the skewness? Skewness, it's some like a tilt from left side to right side. This is normal distribution, yeah, Gaussian. This one with positive skewness, this one with negative skewness. Okay, here we have, for example, this one is a Gaussian distribution, this one is with a higher courtesis, this one is with a lower courtesis. But the mean value is the same. You know, this, one, this is very sensitive moment, this one and this, because what, especially courtesis. You, you, you get some two images with equal mean value. It, it's quite the same. But due to calculation of these higher order moments, you can evaluate some differences between of them. It can be very small. Okay, the second one, it's a well-known correlation analysis and autocorrelation analysis. So, you know this formula, yes? It's a autocorrelation, it's a correlation of signal with itself. What can we do with this? For example, in order to diagnose 
So any, okay, any uh, asymptotically asymmetric distribution can be evaluated by correlation analysis in two perpendicular direction, x and y. Based on this, we use the following methodology, the following methodology of autocorrelation processing for the distribution of values q. q, it can be Stokes vector element, Miller matrix element, and so on. Your signal here. Here we have two, this different correlation function and this different half widths. Here you can see, yes? It's quite the same, but not the same. And this asymmetry coefficient is this divided P max on P min, this one P max on P min, gives us evaluation. For example, we can, we can compare between almost the same image, almost the same two images, for example, with malignant formation and with normal. So the half widths of the autocorrelation function plays uh, main role. Okay, we, we have told uh, about fractality of biological tissue. Also, we can calculate the power spectrum density of our images. Here it's a model image, for example, for, for Stokes vector of uh, biofringent cylinders. This one is two-dimensional autocorrelation function, and this one is uh, power spectrum density. Okay. Fractal analysis is based on the calculation of logarithmic dependencies of power spectra of values Q, yeah? And further mentioned dependencies are approximated by the least square method in curves F. Due to the form of this curve, for the curve, this, this one, it, 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 can, it, it, it doesn't, it, it don't show, the, the show, shown here, but this one, it's approximation curve. So the distribution is a fractal, distributions are fractal, when there is, only one stable inclination angle exists within two, three decades of uh, sizes changes. Distribution are multifractal when there is a several stables, yeah? Inclination angles exist. And the distribution are random when there is no stable inclination angles. So one can use this approach independently of statistic and autocorrelation. Okay, we called these approaches, statistic, correlation, and fractal, we call it uh, multifunctional laser polarimetry. Because not only one parameters are evaluated and described, and several parameters can be simultaneously described. And when one method is not very good for evaluation. The second one will be much better, for example. Because also, this one, I want to, that you, are, you are keep in mind. All the data and parameters Q presented in previous lecture, measured in previous lecture, need to be quantitatively analyzed. Okay, this, this is the message. Okay, the last one, yeah? 20 minutes, okay, it's more time to the question, maybe. <clears throat> so, the principles and methods of polarization and Mueller matrix mapping, finally. Uh, here, this is a Mueller polarimeter, so-called Stokes polarimeter. What, 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 whenever you want. Uh, we, are, we, we don't speak about the procedure of measurement of Mueller matrix. Stokes vector, yes, but Mueller matrix, no. The illumination conditions, it's a linear polarization with azimuth zero, 45 degree, 90 degree, and right circular polarization. Analysis with respected azimuth of this Analyzer is 0, 45, 90, and 135, or it can be minus 45, yeah? It's the same. And right, right and left circular using this plate here. This, this, this is a procedure what we will do 
next Thursday. For example, first step, set transmission plane of analyzer with the angles zero and 90 degree here. Measured intensity of zero component, here measured intensity of the 90 degree. This is a calculation. Here we can, we can obtain first Stokes vector element and the second one. The second step, 45 and 135, the analyzer nine. Measure two distributions and calculate the third uh, Stokes vector parameters normalized on the first. And the third step is measure, is, it, 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 uh, consists of measuring the fourth Stokes vector parameters and we will obtain this one. Similarly, one can calculate other Stokes vectors for another illumination condition, because here, so let the problem beam will be linearly polarized with azimuth zero degree. Here, the whole algorithm. This is Stokes vector calculation. This is Miller matrix calculation using these Stokes vectors elements. And this is the calculation of polarization parameters or uh, so-called polarization maps. It's azimuth and ellipticities of polarization. It's just a, for, a, for a azimuth of polarization, it's just you should divide the third Stokes vector element with the, on the second one and do this arc tangents. The uh, ellipticity parameters it depends on, on the fourth Stokes vector parameter. Here you can see the measured, experimentally measured and analyzed through this uh, three approach, yeah? Uh, Muller matrix uh, invariance of optical uh, and, and optical anisotropy parameters. For a linear bioinfringence, you can see it here. This is just a histogram of this, of this distribution and this is a power spectrum of the distribution. This is a circular bioinfringence, namely optical activity. This analogously uh, uh, situation. But if you could, could see here that this one is more regular than this one, yes? Because this power spectrum is, is more, more, more linear than this one, yes? So even just take a look on this picture. This one is uh, linear for uh, Miller matrix elements for linear and circular dichroism uh, with the necessary uh, evaluation of this. And here, the last table, it's uh, for, uh, this is a possibilities of multifunctional uh, polarimetry for uh, evaluation of uh, this Miller matrix elements. This is for calculated for uh, statistic moments. These two is second and the fourth st statistic moment for the autocorrelation function. And this one D is a, is a standard deviation of power spectra. For two groups of patients, it, it pre-cancer and cancer states. So, and you, can, you could see that uh, prostate cancer, it's, yeah. And you could see that here, this is the balanced accuracy of the diagnosis with diagnostical methods. And this balanced accuracy is on the level of nine, uh, 90, or 90, uh, 80, 75%. It's quite higher. It's, a gold, it's uh, near the gold standard of, due to the histochemical methods. Thank you for your attention and all the participants are kindly invited to attend Correlation Optics Conference in Chernitsy in September this year. You could refer this website. So thank you once more.